They're on their feet. Stanford in the home whites. Iowa State. Red and gold and underway at Maples. And the Cardinal control the opening tip. You know, we're going to be looking at a lot of interior basketball today. You'd like some post play, some great action down low. This is what you're going to get. Erie Offen from Stanford, who just elevated her skill set, continues to do so already, two on the board. Right in front of Crooks. And the question for the Cyclones, how can Crooks get her hands on the basketball against Cameron Brink? And that's how the turnaround. Off the back iron, Erie Offen the rebound. Literally what we saw today at shoot around from Stanford their scout is they're gonna play behind crooks try to force her over her right shoulder And those fadeaway shots. That's exactly what you want. You got to shoot over a 6-4 extended Cameron Brink Once again the best shot blocker in the country Nobody's blocked more shots than 22 in white this season three and a half per game She had four in the first three quarters on Friday night against Norfolk State Iowa State drops back in a 2-3 zone. Lapolo for three. Crooks clears. And again, that, that is what you'll see from Iowa State. A lot of different looks defensively. You could see man zone. Well, triangle in two. Just keep your eyes open. This defense is going to shift. You got to do whatever eyes, you can. My eyes are open. And it's off to, good, to a good start for Stanford. Tapped away by Brink. Out of bounds. Last touch by Crooks. And head coach Bill Finley just looked over to Addie Brown and said, you got to get some height on that. The same pass that worked against Maryland, that's not going to work here tonight. You got way more height. And then Cameron Brink able to get her hands on that one. Hannah Jump also starting in her final game at Maples, the senior, the all-time leading three-point shooter in Stanford history. In and out from deep. Brown controls the board, and here comes Emily Ryan. Ryan played a masterful game with 14 assists the other day, and she can give you some scoring as well. And already some good, solid defense here from the Cardinal. Cameron Brink giving you a motion, getting on the floor. And this is what you get. It's not just the leadership. I mean, she loves help side defense, and there's not many people you can say that about. But look at her, just yeah, getting the deflection and noticing it was off the leg of Remley Ryan. Two nothing our score. Lapolo with a pump fake. Very often from the same spot moments ago, she's got both Cardinal buckets. That can be her spot all night long if she wants it. A beautiful touch, and the more you can bring Crooks outside of the paint, well, you really start to open things up. Cameron Brink can move well without the basketball. And here's the double. Turnovers on three consecutive possessions for the Cyclones. Very often slipped appears to be okay. And Iowa State racing back down to the other end of the court. Terry Oppen stepped out. And Baylor with a three-point win. Thank you very much. Welcome to Maples Pavilion. Here on this Sunday evening, Iowa State and Stanford meeting for the first time in 15 years, and the Cardinal off to a great start. Their final home game of the season, and Bellinger connects for the first basket of the night for the Cyclones. She is their big-time three-point shooter. When they need a bucket, when they need that three, that's who they look for. She gets them on the board. It's got to be a sigh of relief for the Cyclones. Starting this game a little tight. For Weisbro, Roy Philpott, so glad you could join us tonight. Cardinal upset in this same game a year ago at the hands of Ole Miss. Very often was fouled on the way up. She's got all four Stanford points to start. Take a look at tonight's most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity. Audie Crooks stole the show literally on Friday night with a 40 piece and 12 rebounds. She only missed two shots and she attempted 20. It was a, a performance for the ages. And not only that, it was the comeback from 20 points down. It was the story that we found out you know, that she had lost her father when she was 16. Always says a prayer to him before the game to you know, just make sure that she feels settled in her best place spiritually. And just what an unbelievably composed performance for somebody's debut in the NCAA tournament. And all those green indicators tell you that those were makes. 18 out of 20, I'm no mathematician, about 90%. I'll take your word for it. It was pretty <laughs> darn good. A lot of buzz around the country for sure. 
Yeah, the social media buzz was certainly out there. Leah Boston tweeted how impressed she was with Audie Crooks. She even got the Iowa State Police Department. That's right. Tweeting about her, saying some crooks you just can't catch. Emily Ryan from downtown, and that'll tie us up at six. So the conversation you and I had about, you know, point production coming from other places than Audie Crooks, in my opinion, if Crooks gets 25 or less, even 20 or less, Iowa State's got to hit 10 threes tonight. Here we go, and off the glass. Whoa, she is spectacular tonight. Came ready to play. This is, as we've heard other coaches describe her as we're seeing it ourselves, this is the best post player that nobody talks about. Here we is a top WNBA prospect looking in the next season. Ryan, the senior, outside to Brown, the freshman. Big win for Baylor in Blacksburg in a game that just concluded moments ago. Can't say that that was stunning given the fact that Liz Kitley is out for the remaining portion of the season, which is now over for the Hokies. And it's a tough go for the Hokies to, you know, with Kitley, they are such a different team. They're still talented without her. And this is what you're going to see. Kiki Uriopin is going to try to bring Crooks outside of that paint. She's got the nice touch off the glass. She can put it on the floor powerfully, move really well. I mean, they're going to stretch Crooks as far as they can. Oskana twirling around the high ball screen and a foul called in the interior. Veteran officiating crew tonight led by Jesse Dickerson, Julie Promenhoek, and Anthony Robinson. Saw them Friday and they did an outstanding job. This has been a well officiated NCAA tournament here in Stanford. First bucket for Cameron Brink and she wanted the foul. She got great position. I mean, was really just to the left of the bucket there and that's what she works so hard to get, Erie often does as well. It's all that work they do beforehand. Okay. Bellinger, a quick three. We see you, Anna. Second triple of the game, and they'll call that a long two, so make it 10 to eight. And jump shot was saved. And a miraculous play by Nymir Dew to keep it in bounds off the block. Yeah, that was a huge hustle play. No, great recovery defense by Brink. Dew off the mark. And tapped out of bounds back to the Cardinal in the two-point game. And this Stanford team, you know, you're led by upperclassmen, Cameron Brink, Hannah Jump, Yuri Offen, the junior. And you look at this Iowa State team, and they are, this is the freshman Fat Five, you know, running into town here. Crooks, a freshman. You know, Addie Brown, a freshman at McDonald's, All-American. Ariana you know, Jackson, Jalen Briston, just a few to mention for this team. He's got a lot of talent and youth. And an offensive foul. Crooks claps with her approval. Goes back to ISU. And the first foul on Cameron Brink playing in her final game at Maples tonight. If you're Iowa State, your best offense is to get creative and try to create fouls. So Brink's got one first quarter with five minutes left. That's a good sign for the Cyclones. Now, you, know, you may want to try to get that ball in the Crooks, see if she can body up with Erie Offen. Get a call going. Jackson surveys. Amir Dew has been active in the early going. Another three on the way. Here's Lapolo. And another offensive foul on the moving screen. And all smiles and a lot of dancing and celebrating here in Stanford, California after the fact. And we mentioned the buzz on social media afterwards as well. Just had the country talking when a freshman dropped 40 points in the 12 boards. So efficient. And let's see what she has in store for an encore tonight. Brooke, it does feel like Iowa State has weathered that early Stanford storm and Kiki Ariafin's eight points. Crooks the turn and this time short. Well, getting the early foul on Cameron Brink you know, certainly helps if you're Iowa State. Getting a couple of three-point shots from Bellinger. I mean, you have to have that attitude of we're not going away. We know you're on your home floor. You know, you're going to have to send us out of here. And Erie often, you know, maybe the only bad shot she's taken this game. You know, for right now, Iowa State's got to just keep the ball moving, try to get the best shot they can. Andy Brown also trying to get involved in this offense. How about Bellinger? She's got two threes, missed the mid-range. Anna Bellinger in the face mask tonight after she nearly broke her nose against Maryland on Friday. With Dimitri on the floor for the first time. Very often again, baseline jumper is there. She's got 10. 
The Pac-12 most improved player. Only Kiki Arioffen and Angel Reese averaged 18 and 11 this season. Is her numbers incredible? 12 more points a game this year, seven more boards. And Ooh, Brown was out. fouled. That goes on Dimitri. That's her first. Crowd shows its appreciation for that call. <laughs> Not often these, these fans, you don't hear a lot of boos from Stanford fans. We'll take another look at this one. And just enough of a touch right in front of the official on the far side. I'm imagining if you were called for a similar foul back in the day, Coastal Carolina, you would have had something to say about it. You, would have, you might have saw a quick tee. Ryan trying to feed Crooks, finally does. Against here often, scoreless so far. In and out off the glass. Corralled by Addie Brown, another freshman, and she was fouled. And that will go against Dimitri again, her second in the last 25 seconds. Yeah, I mean, Iowa State should try to make this game physical. Stanford had seen that, like, spacing, passing. You know, they're going to contain you on defense. It's going to be a battle inside. These loose balls after rebounds, you know, this is big. So you got to be able to try to secure some of those, even just for your confidence if you're Iowa State. Big story in the tournament today. Duke's upset in Columbus against number two seed Ohio State. A big win for Coach Lawson. Here's a steal. Boscana will shoot a pair. Boy, she wanted three the hard way and was mad at herself for not completing the layup. A terrific bounce back and recovery from Boscana. Right, we said the quicker team that bounces back after mistakes. Here you go, not even one possession. And Bozgana gets the ball back with the opportunity to put her team ahead more. Now she's coming off her career high 18 in the win against Norfolk State. The bench loved it. It was a quiet 18. She started stuffing that stat sheet in the second half. And Tara Vanderveer, the Hall of Fame head coach for the Cardinal, told us earlier today, she's kind of found her groove and found her rhythm. We're going to need her to make it to Cleveland in the Final Four. It goes pretty unnoticed, Roy, but between Brooke Dimitri and Elena Bozgana, they average 13 points, six boards in only 20 minutes, and both of them shoot over 40%. Like, that's a great asset to have in addition to your post players. Cyclones without a bucket in the last three minutes. Crooks on the spin was bumped, and two free throws coming for Iowa State. Now we mentioned the Hall of Fame head coach, Tara Vandeveer, the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. These are two of the longest tenured coaches on the hardwood. Bill Finley has been the head coach in Ames going back to 1995. And Tara Vandeveer, of course, in her 38th season, three national championships, all the Final Fours. Their first meeting on the hardwood since back in 2009 in the big dance. Two coaches that have a lot of respect for each other. And one more coming for Crooks, 66% on the season. Do you remember today when we were listening to the scouting report about Audie Crooks and Tempe Brown, the assistant coach for Stanford, said, she's not going to push you. She's going to move you. And that's exactly what she did to Kiki Arioffen, who doesn't look like she can be moved anywhere. It's going to be a fun test of strength down low for these ladies. I'm, I'm enjoying the battle already. Brink's back in the game now. Brink with the one foul on the floor and the baseline jumper from 15. No. Emily Ryan the rebound. Now Ryan missed the first nine games of the season with a foot injury. Now healthy. Her leadership has been sorely missed. Early and Crooks cranks one home with a wry smile afterwards. <laughs> These fans don't like it. Cameron Brink set up to take a charge. You know, she's definitely going to try to do what she can to get Crooks into foul trouble as well. This is a good mind game going. And Brink wants the ball right away. Yeah, she does. Elbow jumper, no. Advantage Crooks on these last two possessions. I mean, the early battle to get position is fun as well. Brown there she for three. Is. Iowa State grabs the advantage at 14 to 13. Well, some life for the Cyclones who take the lead here. And if I'm Stanford, I'm going right to Brink, and I'm saying, hey, you've got to charge the rim. Brink, patience inside, couldn't connect. The Cyclones have their first lead. Ryan the step back triple. There it is again. A 9-0 run for the Cyclones. It's 
2,200 miles from home, and the bounce pass from Bozgana. Karam's out of bounds, back to ISU. Audie Crook setting back up, and she's tried a couple different positions this time. Well, that definitely could have been a charge. That was a lot of physicality down there in the post. And then Emily Ryan, a little brush screen, you go under, and Ryan confident enough to take the three. Addie Brown feeling it, an early heat check. A 12-0 run for Iowa State. 20 to 13. And it is a touching moment for a player that remains so well grounded and humble mm -hmm. despite putting up 40 points in a game like that her NCAA tournament debut inside a chance for three and coming off the bench Nunu Aguera and that's a great way to contribute averaging less than six points per game coming in uh, look like IF State might have changed their defense coming out into a triangle two or a box and one we, we talked about those junk defenses that one looks like a box and one and then Stanford takes immediate advantage Great job by Nunu to get to the rim. You know, just making the final point, too, on, on Crooks and her humility or her talent. I saw her about an hour, hour and a half after the game, and I, I said, your phone's got to still be blowing up, right? You know, she said, you know what? I put it on DND. Do not disturb the best feature possible on an iPhone. Shot clock, game clock, virtually identical. A good start for the visitors from Ames out of the Big 12. Brown to Ryan, wide open, and another triple. Down it goes, Iowa State. Six of eight from deep to start, and a statement being made as the Cyclones tried to avoid that similar outcome. And boy, they were held in check by Ole Miss and a Rebels team that just locked them down defensively. Yeah, I mean, you saw the, the highlights. There, there was just no space to breathe when it came to Ole Miss in their defense. And now Audie Crooks getting deep in the paint there. Great defense by Cameron Brink to not foul, not go for the block, just play straight up. And Stanford is going to have to find some kind of rhythm offensively. You know, we talked about the junk defenses that Iowa State could throw at you, but they, they got to find just some rhythm here with Cameron Brink off the screen and roll. We have yet to kind of see that balance. Ripped away by Bellinger. Iowa State controls with a seven-point lead. High ball screen for Brown, and the pass for Crooks goes out. Yeah, that one's not going to work. You, you cannot go to anywhere on the same side where Erie Offen and Brink are and expect to get a lot pass. Well, how dominant was South Carolina earlier today? Oh the bench scoring for Don Staley's Gamecocks, so impressive. They steamrolled North Carolina to advance to the Sweet 16 and remain undefeated. Foul inside. This one goes against the Cyclones. We mentioned the upset. Duke came back to beat Ohio State in Columbus, the number two seed Buckeyes. And one of my final four picks, I should say. LSU <laughs> trailed by seven kind of midway through that second quarter, and then everything started to change in Baton yeah. Rouge and they ended up pulling away from a very good and underrated Middle Tennessee team. How about Erie Offen just straight getting up with that rebound over Audie Brooks? And then for the finish, what a pass. There it goes with Polo. Gary Oppen with 12. The lead down to five. Boy, Reagan Richardson from Duke had an incredible game. I, I love her confidence, the way she's scoring. Duke is so hard to score on, by the way. Defensively, they're one of the best out there. The block by Brink on Audi Crooks, and it goes back to Stanford. No, don't forget the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues tonight on TNT and TBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. And Kelsey Jones for Iowa State was just helped off into the Cyclones locker room. As Stanford gets the ball back, trailing 23 to 18. And a foul down low. Addie Brown can't believe it. Seen a lot of complaining early on to this veteran officiating crew. Which is not going to help. And any player coach, you know, that spent some time in the game will tell you that. It, Addie Brown's got to not just try to fight with position for Brink. Brink's too fast, too long. She's going to set her up. 
She's got to get off of Brink to get back in front of her. We mentioned Kelsey Jones banged up on that last play, hit the deck hard, and the knee of Hannah jumped, hit right behind her head. So we'll give you an update on that as soon as we receive one. Brink receives the rebound, missed the chippy. Well, that's the rhythm you want to see for Stanford. I mean, those are great plays, energy plays, put back. So you imagine she'll try to get it back on defense. That's another area where they can start kickstarting some of these shots to feel easier. Brooks with position defended by Brink. She'll take her time and go to work. That high red district, another block and a jump ball. Stanford gets it on the arrow. And listen to this crowd at Maples. I could watch a one-on-one -on -one matchup of this. This is fantastic. You've got the best shot blocker in the country. The freshman phenom who just dropped 40, trying to get crafty in there, undersized, but the strength there. Jump back to Ariafen. Short with a baseline jumper, Brink. Lost it out of bounds. Well, good hustle. The senior point guard, Emily Ryan. When Crooks gets drawn out of the lane, like when Ariafen pulls her out, if it's a missed shot, like, you've got to see four other Cyclone jerseys crashing the board. Crooks is not going to be able to get back in there and get a board. Ryan gets it back from Crooks. Crooks with position and the sweeping hook. No. Well, both bigs bothering each other on both ends of the floor Big early. Time. Harry Offen's been the difference for Stanford in the early going. 12 of the 18 points scored by the player with the ball, number 44. Make it 14. Just body it up. It's a great no call as well by the officials as Erie often makes that powerful move. And you're going to continue to see that from her. One possession game, Erie often. One of the top players in the country you probably haven't heard enough about. Supporting to everybody here at Maples, including all four teams that were on hand back on Friday. It'll stay on this end with eight to shoot. And for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship games on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Bellinger's been active. A step back three was blocked by jump. Jump on the other end. She was wide open. Karam's out to Ogden. Very often with 14 and was fouled by Dew. I'm here, Dew picks up her first. And the intensity of this game is so thick right now. In every position trying to get battled for it. What I would love to see, and I can't believe I'm saying this, these players just gotta stop talking to the officials. Both sides, it's too much. It's eventually it's gonna burn. You just gotta leave it to the coaches and let them address it. There's a second foul on two. She'll get a breather. Harry Oppen missed it off of her knee and out of bounds. If you're Stanford, do you start thinking about what happened last year in no, the same moment? You do not. Absolutely not. You gotta stay focused on this moment. It's not the same team, not the situation, same situation, opponent, none of that. You, you gotta focus on literally this defensive possession at a time. And now what you're gonna do on offense. Ryan Wyatt right. It goes out back to the Cardinal. And Iowa State now six of nine from deep. They have yet to score so far in our second quarter. And Still maintain a three-point lead. And Tara Vanderveer just quick to get up. She's very fiery right now, trying to give directions, inspiration, motivation to this team. And just find some, find some groove. They haven't found a groove yet, team-wise. Jump left open. That's, That's a it. three, and we're tied. That's a groove getter. Watch what happens now. Bellinger has it for Iowa State. From 16 and drains it off the screen. No fear. How about you playing a game for the, with a face mask for the first time and you still come in nailing shots. And Atabu inside was trying to 
Body up with Frank called for the foul. For Iowa State, the Cardinal, led by Hall of Famer Tara Vanderveer, got the advantage so far inside. Cam Brink, Kiki Arioffen, really it's Arioffen so far, the big reason why. Brink has it, free throw line extended. Little high-low action. And a foul over the back. It'll be called on Stanford. And that'll be the second on Cameron Brink. Another different look here from Iowa State defensively. I'm going to see them looking to be in a box and one with Jones at the one. He's guarding Hannah Jump. So, it, it you know, it's, you do what you can to try to throw off the offense. That's the whole point of... You know, putting these defenses in at times and making the offense take time to recognize what they are. Iowa State one of eight from the floor so far in our second quarter. Still leading by two. Physical game down low. Three-pointer off the mark. That was Harriel who just checked in. And Janiah Harriel missed the triple. Cyclones get it back. Here's Emily Ryan. She wants to be a head coach one day. She has one of the louder voices you'll hear at practice day in and day out in Ames. And that's a much different and better job defensively. You know, Harriel going over the screen. You heard Nikki talk about that. They got to go over it. And then she pays it off with a three of her own. Working on that exact shot at that exact spot on the floor all afternoon at shoot around for Stanford. 32 and white. And the Cardinal back in front. And a forearm by Harriel, and that'll be her first. Here's Harriel off of the steal, gets it back out. Erie often the quick hot touch and the kick out from the bench. Oh, yeah. She's been working on that jump shot in the second part of the season. Tar Vanderveer telling us earlier today that that is something that she's been very impressed with, kind of rejuvenating her release and how she gets to the apex of the jumper. Cardinal by one. Iowa State just two points so far in our second quarter. Emily Ryan would love to change that. And the floater is short. Crooks off glass. Her biggest strength is being able to hold off the defenders how she how she does either before she gets the catch or on that offensive rebound. So that's a place where she could get some points up. Wide open for Harriel. Tracked down by Ogden and Ryan and a jump ball. The arrow favors the Cyclones. Brooke, how impressed are you with Audie Crooks and the fact that she's been physical without fouling and now with five points? Yeah, I mean, you have to play incredibly smart basketball because you know it's going to be a physical game. And so Crooks has just got to do what she can to get touches. I mean, she hasn't looked flustered one time because she's getting, she's getting pretty beat up in the post as well. And keeping her composure. Maddie Brown operating. Too strong. Tried to rip away the board. Could not. Stanford comes away with it. Ogden wide open, top of the key. I think Iowa State perfectly fine with 40 and white, 32 and white, launching threes. That is the best shot you could ask for if you're Iowa State. And, and I think Erie Oppen, you know, she needs to get that ball around the elbow, maybe that short corner, and just try to put the ball on the floor and create some and some bodying up with Crooks. Two of the best three-point shooters in the Big 12 and the Pac-12 defending each other tonight. Hannah Jump and, and Hannah was, Bellinger. They're dribbling too much. Cyclone's got to get back to passing and spacing. Under two to go in the half. Entertaining start at Maples. Harry Oppen with 16. That's what I want, shooting the ball, handling the basketball right now. Like, I would want my offense if I'm Stanford Give Erie often a touch every every possession. Even if she doesn't shoot it, she needs to be that anchor in there, draw some defenders inside, and then get everybody else moving. Emily Ryan probing and connecting down low. It was Bill Finley who told us Thursday in the first practice session here at Maples, coming to one of our practices, the two voices you'll oh, hear, wow. mine and Emily Ryan's. Very often missed the reverse. Outside to jump. Ooh. 
I'll tell you this, Kiki Uri often has been responsible for extra possessions and more points by her hustle getting on the floor. 50-50 balls have been huge for the Cardinal tonight. Ryan kept her dribble alive off glass again. Back-to-back -back buckets. Answer. Emily Ryan's as tough as they get. She's got 13 tonight. Nearly came up with a steal against Aguera. Tied at 31, approaching 30 seconds to go. Ari Oppen, one of her rare misses this evening. It goes back to the Cyclones, and Brooke, shot clock is off. Iowa State can play for the final possession of the half. I think they take the best shot available. I don't think you necessarily have to play for that final shot, but you know, certainly the way they've been shooting the three ball, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Ryan take that three or even Addie Brown. Six threes in the first quarter, none so far in the second. Ryan's got to go. Crooks for three. Ryan gets it back and fouled before the buzzer. Emily Ryan's going to shoot two. And it was a bang-bang play at the horn for sure. They may take a look at it, and they will. Big 12 first team a year ago, all Big 12 second team this year. And the game she had Friday in the comeback against Maryland. Cyclones were down 20. Ryan scored 18. And maybe more importantly, had 14 assists. A new career high, and one more free throw coming. And she's backing up that performance. with 15 in the first half against Stanford. And Iowa State, I think you gotta like your position. You're feeling all right if you're the Cyclones right now. Now you're hoping your three-point shooting can still stay as hot as it was in the first half, because Hannah Jump, she's that three-point shooter for Stanford. You saw a bit of her talent get to work in the first. Osgana stepped out of bounds on the rebound. It goes to the Cyclones. Iowa State has never defeated Stanford in four previous meetings. The last time came back in 2009 in the tournament. Final game of the night on the women's side. Crooks was shoved, and the foul will be called on Erie Oppen. And, Brooke, that's going to be her second. So if you're Iowa State, you've yet to really be able to have success getting out of the ball inside where she can... You get that easy turn just like she did against Maryland. It's the catch. That's the toughest part for her, and especially in this game. So getting to the free throw line is a good sign for Iowa State. And the Cyclones take everybody on the floor and move them away from the painted area. Not even going to attempt to get the rebound. I mean, that's what they do. It, it, get, it get me anxiety as a shooter. One of two for, for sure. Crooks. And, and we've seen them kind of have that uh, way about them. A lot of trust in their free throw shooters. Brooks has held her own tonight against Brink. Very often it's been a bit of a different story. Kiki's operated with a mid-range game. Trying to pull the freshman away from the low posts. With a bounce. She's able to get that ball and keep it so low. Her length, the way that she gains real estate just with a step or two. And then a tough finish falling out of bounds. Belcher hit a couple of long-range shots in the first half. Against Siri Offen. Outside to Jackson for three. And a good sign for the Cyclones. Cyclones continue to stay hot from outside. That's now their 7-3 of the game. 7-4-11. Audie Crooks was 18-20 the other night. Now they're getting it done from outside. We thought it would take at least 10 threes if Crooks didn't hit 25. But watch this move. Stutter step, little jab, and then exploding the left side. And as she gets more agile and stronger, she'll be able to finish closer to the rim. Ariana Jackson, 41% three-point shooter. Crooks just picked up her second foul. Perhaps a developing story there. Lapolo for three, and the response! All about balance it is on both sides of scoring. I mean, everybody with the ball in their hand feels confident looking for their three. Unexpected offense from Lapolo and Jackson on back-to-back -back possessions. 
for both sides. Ryan continues her sharp shooting. This time inside now with 17. How crafty is she? I feel like she's got control of the ball just in one hand. Eerie often. Woo! Unstoppable tonight. Iowa State's lead down to one. Erie often with 20. Crooks against Brink. Brink won that battle. Well, she grabs her chest for a moment. And may have taken a shot right at the base of her neck. Brown with a rebound. Brink appears to be okay. It has been physical down low. Outside to Brown. I was like, he checked for Brown. She was feeling it in that first half. And we start to get in the offense, and that looks to be a foul away from the ball on both guys. One point game at Maples. Iowa State gets it back. Bellinger baseline. Natabu has it against Brink. Brink the rejection. Cyclones get it back. Shot clock at 10. Jackson picked up by Ogden. Got this defense from Stanford on this possession. Ryan behind the back, gotta go. Nearly got it off the glass. Yeah, Brooke, you mentioned the defense, perhaps the best possession we've seen for Stanford on that side. Brink, second field goal, wants the foul, didn't get the whistle. She got great position, bodied up the contact and I'm just kind of wait to see when she really starts to come alive she's an emotional player and right now you want to see that not in a negative way toward the officiating I'm talking about getting her team rallied I mean Brooke she's supposed to be the number two pick in the WNBA draft coming up next month Emily Ryan is short she'll track down her own miss and get fouled from behind Apollo the guilty party that time Cameron Brink Figures to be number two right behind Caitlin Clark, who's back in action on ESPN tomorrow night in primetime. And you take a look at the updated mock draft, and you got stars everywhere yeah. this go around. You cannot lose. I mean, the WNBA draft is, it, the WNBA is going to be secure, even more so for the next few years. He's got great stars coming in, young stars rising up. You know, a league that's just seen incredible numbers in championships won all across the board. I mean, I was there for the Chicago Sky a few years ago, and the atmosphere is just electric, and it's even better now. Brown wide open. They worked on that exact play yep. and shoot around the entire second half of the session, and it pays dividends. Iowa State back in front by one. Ogden for three. And she'll get it back. Maybe the longest rebound in the tournament this year. <laughs> Brink against Brown, senior on, freshman, outside, Arioffin. Well, Ryan just has a calmness about her that settles things down for her team. Running the point, inside, and a chance for three. More unexpected offense, Jalen Bristow. You know, Bristow, one of the freshmen we told you about. This fabulous team here, this young squad. A little pump fake, driving hard baseline, and taking Ogden off the bounce. You gotta have heroes. Everybody's gotta show up today. Can Iowa State get this done? Five freshmen playing key roles in this NCAA tournament run for head coach Bill Finley. Hasn't really operated in the portal yet. Hasn't had to. He's done an outstanding job recruiting, and he thinks this roster is built for the long haul. And tonight they're showing why. Looks like they might be in one of those junk defenses as well. Perhaps a triangle in two. And Brink, I like her getting that ball up there. She's got to take charge. This is her floor. This is her last game here on this floor. I know she wants to leave it all on the line. I want to see her come alive and start to demand the ball. Final game at Maples for one of the best players in the history of the Pac-12. Crooks, high off the glass, no. And Brink over the back. That is her third foul. And pleading for rebounding from her squad. Boards in the same season. Currently on the bench with the three fouls and free throws coming for Jalen Bristow. 77% on this season and she'll get one more. Brooke, I mentioned during the break, there's some nervous energy in this arena right now. Yeah, you can feel it. Knowing what's at stake. Bristow missed a pair. 
Stanford gets it back. A chance to tie or go ahead with a three. Jump. And air ball. That's probably happened one or two times in her entire career. Yeah, I mean, that's a spot on shooter right there. Stanford you know, looking out of rhythm, especially with Brink on foul trouble. Erie often has been the one to show up big time today. Jump with a few shots here and there. Polo getting it in as well. But where's that consistency that Stanford needs? Because Emily Ryan, she's the one bringing it tonight for Iowa State when we were talking all night about Audie Crooks on Friday. Ryan has 19. The lead back to four. And it's not only the point production and rebounds for Ryan. She doesn't turn it over. And she's going to be a fantastic head coach. I mean, look at her composure and her fiery skills, too. It's not, she's not just a calm presence out there. Like, she is a true leader. Another coach on the floor for Bill Finley. Brown the runner. Very often the rebound. Bounce pass to jump. Back door was open. That's how you get it done. Catch them when they're not paying attention. Stanford, a great passing team. Get them out in transition. That's your 13th assist of the game. So the ball is moving. Ryan sprung free. Ryan. Another layup. She's got 21. Like Elmer's glue, that ball on her hand. You're not getting that away from her. Senior leadership, a veteran presence in the Iowa State backcourt. A true difference maker in the first game and a half of the NCAA tournament. One point away from her season high of 22 already. Iriopin. <laughs> 22 for Kiki Iriopin. Trying to match Emily Ryan point for point. Ryan again with a path. Crooks a touch. Iriop in the rejection. Look at Iriop is sprinting down the floor. That's what I'm talking about. She wants that basketball, and they say, you can have it. Crooks oh, rips away the rebound. And Ryan traveled. Well, I didn't know she had clean possession. And they'll say it's a turnover. Let's go back to that great defense without the foul from Erie often. Contest, you get it, and you go. Look at her sprinting down the floor. The turnover, Brink loves to see it. The team getting the ball back. We mentioned the nervous energy in this building for Cameron Brink. Your last game at Maples, and with a loss tonight, your collegiate career comes to a close. She's sensing that right now. Aguera inside working hard. We're tied at 48. Four ties, nine lead changes. Ryan, that's an offensive foul. And Aguera has something to say. Charge 101. Terrific heads up play defensively from Aguera. Motions running high at Maples Pavilion. The lob off the rim from Dimitri. Cyclones get it back in a tie game. And Dew was fouled on the runner. Here he often clipped her, and that's going to be her third. So Brink with three, Iriopin with three. And the two Stanford stars will exchange a handshake as Brink checks back in. You see Arioff and try to play help side and just gets her enough with the body. It's the it's the swing down Roy versus just stand still contest. And we heard from Tara Vanderveer that that might be an issue for them tonight. She said they're possible to get into foul trouble and that's what could hurt us. Iowa State just five of ten at the line. Do miss a pair. The rebound tracked down by Bristow. High ball screen for Ryan against Cameron Brink. Weaving her way through traffic. Crooks has it, and she was bumped and fouled. And that's going to be number four on Cameron Brink. My goodness. Not even able to get one offensive possession. This is huge. I mean, if you're Iowa State, you do, to me, you do nothing but try to get Erie off and one more foul on the next possession. 
Ryan just working, working. And at that last minute here, Crooks got in. Brink's got to keep her hands up, trying to get that deflection. You get it, but also, you know, awareness of where you are in the game. You've got major foul trouble, so it's more important to have you in there and contest. Two for two for Adi Crooks. Brink with four fouls. Ariopin with three. Brink on the bench. Kiki on the floor. Ariopin on Crooks. There's the quickness. And the finish. 24 for Kiki Ariopin. Did you see after she faced up? They both bumped into each other, and neither one of them gave each other space. Like, those are the two strongest women on the floor right now. It's so much fun to watch them go at it. Tied at 50, less than a minute remaining in the third. Crooks yelling out instruction. She'll get it back. Boy, so calm. Five to shoot. Now the Cyclones got to go. Jackson fell down and a turnover. Ahead to Iriopin. And Jackson remains on the floor and just stepped up and is bleeding. And then do you consider bringing Brink back on the floor? Not, I'd say not until about the five minute mark of the fourth quarter, wow. depending on what the score is. I mean, your most valuable player, you need her in there at clutch moments. Final game at Maples Pavilion. There's a steal. Bristow came away with it. Weaving her way through traffic and she ran out of space. Well, a big moment there. That could have been an easy bucket for Iowa State. Instead, Stanford gets it back with 10 seconds left in the third. One of the hard things to do is when you're a freshman, everything feels so fast. So that opportunity, that ball, that big goal right there. And then you have to think there's a possibility subconsciously you're worried about slipping. You know, is there still some blood spots at the other end of the floor? You see these ladies just styled in tonight have just provided some enter entertainment. Everything we hope for. Shot clock is off. Apollo has it for Stanford. Jump the backdoor cut again. Outside Aguera. 30 minutes in. We were throughout this game. Does she have enough to lead the Cardinal into the Sweet 16? We're 10 minutes away from finding out. Ariopin with 24. And Hannah Belger has checked back in with the face mask off. After nearly breaking her nose Friday night, she wore it for the first three quarters. It is off in the fourth, and we will see if that assists in her shooting. Well, it certainly seemed to help her out the other night. I'm surprised to see her take it off, but clearly a game of comfort is necessary right now. Iowa State making Stanford uncomfortable all night long. We've really yet to see the Cardinal get to a rhythm. That's going to be a foul on Crooks trying to keep Erie off and from staying in position. Third on the freshman Crooks. Iowa State was upset in the first round a year ago by Toledo. Stanford lost in the second round here in this building to Ole Miss as a one seed. Ariop in the mid range. Cardinal are back in front. Kiki with 26. WNBA scouts looking, just kind of saying, yeah, we're going to see you in a year. You can only imagine how much oh more goodness. she will improve between end of this season and next year. Brooks hit the deck trying to save it and could not. All smiles on the way up. Stanford gets it back with a two point lead. I mean, this is just such a likable young woman. The hustle, the demeanor, the teamwork. I just love to see her play. And as one tweet we saw the other night, very accurately describes after this year, she's the best player in Iowa. Y'all better pay attention, number 5-5. Five, five. Polo thought about it. The sounds of March on full display tonight. Jump the step back three and down it goes. Cardinal by five. 
And Bill Finley has seen enough. How about Cameron Brink running out to midcourt to give her teammates a high five? To tell Erie off and thank you. Yes, they are, my friend. We appreciate it. Adi Crooks, the talented freshman, first team ball, Big 12. And it's back to a one possession game at Maples. Smart offensive play from Iowa State to go right into Crooks and challenge Brink, who has to just defend without fouling. Now, four fouls for Brink. Four fouls on the floor. Addie Brown calmly drains the elbow, Jay. Between Brown, Crooks, and Emily Ryan, does this team ever get rattled? The simple answer is no. no. <laughs> I like it when you ask me the questions on occasion, too. Aguera <laughs> triple team lost it. Out to break. Fifty-seven, fifty-four. Cameron Brink in her final game here at Stanford on the home floor. And that shot bothered by Agara. Stanford comes away with it. A lot of time left in this one. Brink wants it back to Bozgana. Check it, Dimitri. Brink against Crooks. Short. Ryan for three, and she drilled it. Tied at 57. Emily and a Ryan. new season high for Emily Ryan, Brooke. Stone cold, Emily Ryan. And every time that Emily Ryan's got the ball in transition, you don't know what she's going to do with it. She does not give it away. Brink outside to Lopolo. That's a three. Couldn't get the bounce. And the rebound by Crooks. And, and you saw Brink could only go a little bit up for that board. Did not want to get called for the over the back. Ryan thought about it. Inside to Brown and a turnover ripped away by Aguera. How valuable has three and white been oh in the goodness. second half? I mean, huge. And, and this is the same player that Cameron Brink looked at and said, hey, you got to box out. And she's made some big time plays tonight. Lapolo the Euro. Brown, no, ripped away by Dimitri. And a fresh 20 for the Cardinal. And Tara Vanderveer wants to talk things over. A timeout is called. And Sinford, all it can handle and then some. In a tie game, under six minutes remaining, back on the farm. An open look, that's a three, and it's short by Bozgana. Iowa State controls. Triangle and two, right? Every time out of a timeout, you'll probably see a different look from Iowa State defensively. That time, throwing another junk one, the triangle and two, just bothering Stanford enough to force them to shoot outside. Emily Ryan behind the back from 16. With the bounce, 11th lead change of the night, and Emily Ryan now with 26 points. Cardinal back to work. Brink and Ariafen on the floor. Jump the response. Her final game at Maples, and she's playing well in the second. Yeah, I like her mentality. She's been trying to look for her shot without doing too much tonight. Shooting 50% with those 13 points. They've been huge. Ryan swatted out of bounds. Bozgata and Brink, and the foul will be called on Elena. Boy, Cameron held her breath for a moment there, Didn't worried she? that was number five. I mean, the most direct eye contact with the official, just saying, what are you going to throw up? 2-0 or 2-2 on this foul. And here comes the help side. Ooh, Brink with a clean block, but Poscana got with, with the body. Ryan with 26, 88% free throw shooter. One more coming. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Cyclones by two, Ryan Clutch. And one point away from her career high of 29. Lopolo open. Out of bounds and well short. 
Boy, very often you feel like maybe she needs to operate a little bit more in that high rent district uh, downstairs and get a touch close to the rim. Well, Emily Ryan doing a good job of kind of showing that help side and then getting back out to, to contest the three-point shot. And with Lopolo, like, you'll live with her taking the three versus Iriafi facing up and going to work. So she's doing a good job of forcing Iriafi to pass back out. Crooks the spin, Iriafi the block. Stanford has it. And Crooks commits the foul. And that's going to be her fourth. And a good show of sportsmanship. Trying to help Kiki up. Yeah, these two ladies and Cameron Brink actually all dabbed it up even before the tip tonight. And a lot of respect with each other's games. They're going to play hard to the end. They're going to fight for the ball. Audie Crook's been on the floor all night long. Oh, Erie often with the slip there. Glad that she landed okay. We do see Ariana Jackson back on the Iowa State bench as well, and her chin is taped up after she exited the court moments ago, falling down with blood spewing everywhere. There she is. And a good sign for the Cyclones. Who lead it by two. Screen for jump for the lead. In and out. Here he often gets a rebound. Coach Bill Fenley told us about you know, his concern, not only for Stanford's length, but their athleticism. He just said that they're more mobile than any post players that we've seen throughout the course of the season. And there's some terrific post players in the Big 12 Conference. But yeah, you put together the athleticism, the length, mobility, the spacing and the guard skills, especially what Erie offense bringing to the table tonight. It's just really hard to figure out how to position yourself. Two for two for Erie Offen. Cameron Brink checks in. Kiki's got 28. On 24 shots, Roy. And the next highest Field goal attempts, Hannah Jump with 11. I'm so surprised to see tonight Cameron Brink with just nine field goal attempts. Here he often went over 1,000 points for her career Friday night in the win against Norfolk State. Back that up with a 28 spot so far this evening. Bellinger with a mask off on the floor. Chance to go to the Sweet 16. The winner does exactly that. Ryan, the spin and the triple. And a new career high of 31. Well, Ryan might be leaving here with a 40 piece tonight. Very often traveled. The Cyclones have it leading by three. And again, we've mentioned it several times. You can feel the nervousness of this arena. A capacity crowd, a partisan crowd. Stanford fans everywhere sensing exactly what happened a year ago. Maybe on the verge again. Ryan kept her dribble alive until now. I feel like Addy Brown's going to pop a shot here. Timer at six. Ryan a deep three. And the rebound cleared by Natabu. Two players hit the deck hard, and let's see. Boy, Natabu fell down, and Erie often did. Everybody appears to be okay. We have that seen some tumbles. Yeah, that had me holding my breath. Both players, gosh, Lynn is so awkwardly. I mean, you'd love to see this, though, just fighting till the absolute end. This is everything that March wants to be. Loose balls, going after it, hard play. Wow. Lapolo picked up yeah. her third in that sequence. Yeah, Lapolo, it's on the front. I'm just glad, again, everybody landed safely on that play. That was scary. Brown will track down the deep pass in the backcourt. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Maddie Brown, the freshman, working against Brink, the senior. Got caught in the backdoor cut, Ryan. And she traveled before the bounce pass. Wow. And Addie Brown asking for her teammates, hey, keep moving, get in motion. You got to have that spacing. You can't just go with the one on one dribbling and hope somebody frees themselves up from the defense at the last minute. And that's what Addie Brown, you know, she used a lot of energy on that play, Roy. All that dribbling. And Addie, Audie Crooks, excuse me, now back in the game. Four fouls for the freshman. Unanimous Big 12 performer, all conference. Erie Oppen, the lead down to one. 
Kiki with 30. Brooks has position on Brink. Brink stuffed her. And Crooks fell down hard and look out. And Cameron Brink just fouled out. Brooks in pain. Waves to her head coach indicating she's okay. And that is how Cameron Brink's career ends at Maples Pavilion. A tough call to make because it could have easily just easily been a tie up underneath and good to see Crooks back up after she took a hard fall and a bounce with her head. Here's the foul here. You see, yeah, Brink, she does reach over instead of up. Was that not a shooting foul? It was to me. Officials indicate otherwise. Brown and Ryan some friendly fire and a lot happening here approaching two to play. Now that really could have fired Emily Ryan up. We just got called for a travel a minute ago. Ryan took a shot in the face and Harry often kicked it. Well, we've mentioned several times the physicality between these two teams. It is front and center yeah, it is. in our fourth quarter. Shot clock. Reset back to 20 after the kickball. Brooks on Erie Offen. Determined expression. Erie Offen with a block. Here comes Stanford. Kiki has been the key for the Stanford Cardinal tonight. Incredible performance that time, the biggest defensive play of the night. Here he often wants it instead of three. And it goes! Brooke Dimitri! Welcome to the party, Brooke! Wow, what a big shot! Maddie Brown on Dimitri, the runner off glass, and we're tied! No back down from the freshman, Addie Brown. Right, and for Stanford, you don't waste time. You keep the ball moving. Everybody in the white jersey got to do something. And I'd go right back down to Erie Offen, let her post up, face up, and take Crooks off the bounce. Under a minute to play. Again, Dimitri, not this time. And the rebound controlled by Bristow. I, I don't know, Roy, if I'm Stanford, I'd rather see Erie Offen take that one-on-one. -on -one. Nervous moments in Maples. Brown gets it back. A three, short. She taps it to herself. And the shot clock resets. And Ryan will take a deep breath. For the right to go to the Sweet 16. Crooks with position inside. No! Ariafa, yes! And Tara Vandeveer wanting to talk things over with her team in a tie game. 11.5 seconds remaining. Mitri's got to get it in, and here we go. Ari Oppen. Lopolo. And bumped with a foul to give, so a smart play. And Bill Finley telling that to Emily Ryan right now. Next foul results in free throws. Lapolo has it. She's got to go. Four seconds, three seconds. Here he often. Overtime. Not a bad shot. You get it to best for last. The final game on this Sunday to determine who's going to the Sweet 16. Ah, but it's Monday back east, so good morning, everybody on that east coast. Thanks Indeed for it staying is. staying up late with us. We appreciate each and every one of you. Crooks and Erie often, and the tap control by Stanford. Overtime underway. Brooks with the four fouls, Erie Offen, elbow jumper, Ryan the rebound. A career night for number 11 for the Cyclones already. Crooks will back it down low. Erie Offen controls. Well, the shots that fell against Maryland, an undersized Maryland squad, have not fallen 
the same consistency tonight with Iriafin and Brink patrolling the low post. So actually I'm noticing too, Roy, like her shoulders aren't always square now to the baseline, and that's because Stanford's defense is forcing her to shoot a little more off balance. Hannah Jump was on balance. Stanford back in front. And rather than being able to square up and kind of get that easy lay-in, Audie Cooks is having to use angles tonight, as has Emily Ryan. They've done them well. A sensational crossover, wide open for three! Iowa State back in front. Blazing. Emily Ryan been killing it all night long. Y'all heard about Audie Crooks Friday night. How about a 34-point evening? Very often in a chance for three on the other end. It's Vandermeer <laughs> on the floor. I hope that was in excitement. It doesn't look to be that way. They're watching her. Get back to the bench. Fired up. Tara Vanderveer wants to see her ladies win this game in advance. She had a brief word with Nunu Aguera. More importantly, Harry Offen at the line. And Audie Crooks just fouled out of the game. Oh, what a tournament for that young woman. Blows a kiss to the crowd. And her supporters will we will look forward to seeing Audie Crooks in uniform. Well, you think about the future to play women's college basketball. Juju Watkins, Audie Crooks is a part of that conversation. Caitlin Clark moves on to the WNBA as the number one draft pick next month. Crooks will be a name to remember for a long time. The Stanford lead is two. Bellinger fell down and Ryan. Quickly picked it up. Emily Ryan, what other tricks does she have up her sleeve tonight? Natabu inside, no. Last touch by Aguera, six on the shot clock. And looked like Aguera got a piece of that ball as well. And, and remember, Tar Vanderveer sprinted out on the floor to have a very strong message. And Nunu looked at her and said, I, I got you, I got you. So it was received. Loud and clear, six on the timer. And a foul called. So Lapolo picked up her fourth. Iowa State with now 20 to shoot after the foul call. Dangerous toss. Brown has it. Brown for three. And the lead. Wow. Stone cold from downtown for the freshman, Addie Brown. Lapolo and the response. High level hoops on the farm. Cardinal back in front. Ryan was bumped and lost it out of bounds, and Aguera came up with a stop. And she just tapped the side of her thigh and just said, Let's go. This game has been epic, my friend. An instant classic. Best game of the day and a turnover. Bellinger with a steal. Neither team with a foul to give. Halfway home in our first overtime. Ryan, the tabu, gets Siri Oppen. Ryan open for a moment. Up and in the bucket for Bristow. Tied at 74. Ten ties, 16 lead changes. This game has featured a little bit of everything tonight. For the right to go to the Sweet 16. Wow. Gary Oppen with 35. Ryan will feed the post. Tied at 76, Jalen Bristow. How about the night Jalen Bristow has had and the way that she's able to get herself into position deep late in this game. Two, she's shooting 100% from the floor. Three of three with eight boards. That's huge. And the seven points badly needed with Crooks on the bench after fouling out. Harry Offen attacking oh, yeah. at a new career high for 44 in white. You felt that coming. Couldn't stop it, but you knew it was coming. 
Can Iowa State somehow respond again? The seal for Ryan. The crossover by Ryan. And the foul. And who do they get with a personal? It'll be free throws. And it's Aguera. And the sharpshooter, Emily Ryan. Claflin, Kansas, a senior. Incredible game she had in the 20 point comeback win against Maryland on Friday night. 14 dimes. This evening, it has all been about points. And a bunch of them, 34, in fact. Not only Ryan has a career high, and she doesn't even look like she's breaking a sweat. Tied at 78. Under a minute to go in overtime. Erie often was crushed and fell down hard. And for Natabu, that's her third free throws for the Cardinal to go back in front. And the moment of truth for Kiki Ariafin. Trying to put her team in position once again. Has been perfect at the line tonight. Nervous moments for all sides. Stanford by two. And Maples comes back to life. Ryan gets it back. Plenty of time to shoot. Brown's wide open. That's better spot, and it is again. Iowa State with the lead. More drama than a junior high lunch table here on the farm. Let's go. This game has all the emotions. If y'all are still up watching this on the East Coast, we appreciate you. Stand for the response, oh. Dimitri. The Cardinal have the lead back. And a timeout called by Iowa State. Earn it to tie this game. Cyclones. Top 10 of the country and three pointers made coming into this game. Quick look to Brown, throws it up. No! Dimitri the rebound! And Dimitri was fouled after securing possession. An outstanding free throw shooter and clearly was hacked on the carom. Good position by Brown. But great defense. Look, that's good defense. Brown split the defenders, but no one came and got any peace. And she just lost her balance there. And Brooke Dimitri tonight being a hero. First free throws of the game, 82% on the season. The next one, the most important one, a chance to make it a two-possession game. And she does. Iowa State with two timeouts from Steer either with all of these talented freshmen. Think about that. Do they need the three or do you go for the quick bucket? Uh, no, you need a three right now. A quick shot three. I'm trying to get a screen open for Bellinger or Ryan or Brown. Tabu has it. Ryan gets it. Was clipped. No whistle. Inside and out of bounds. Cyclones. Need a turnover or a quick foul to have a shot. And a timeout called. Tara Vanderveer. Going to be easy for the two seed, Stanford. One more victory means 30 on the slate this season. They'll advance it after the timeout. And Erie Offen was fouled. Now, Brooke, you mentioned it a few moments ago. Audie Crooks put up 40 points Friday night in the comeback against Maryland. Guess who has a chance for the 40 piece this evening? Oh, another, she said. another face of college basketball next season. And Kiki Ariop and 39 on the board and two free throws to come. 
What a game. What a moment for Stanford. 40 for Kiki Irioff and the junior from L.A. Well, Audie Crooks has made herself a household name with just one night of basketball, but Kiki Irioff says, I see your 40 piece. Let me add one to go. Fourth quarter, but she has been there and engaged with this team after fouling out and providing support for her teammates. A steal off the inbounds, and that will do it. Stanford survives in overtime. The Cardinal back to the Sweet 16. Yo, listen up, let me take you on a journey where dreams are born and souls burn with fury in the depths of our hearts. We hold our desires, but to make them real, we must light the fires. In the face of adversity, we stand tall with courage in our hearts. We'll conquer all through the trials and tribulations. We'll endure for our dreams, we'll fight all that we're sure. Fight for your dreams, let the music play In the rhythm of life, find your own way With every beat of your heart and every step you take Keep fighting for your dreams, don't let them break From the city streets to the starry skies We'll reach for the heavens with determined eyes With perseverance as our weapon and passion as our guide We'll break through barriers, let our dreams collide In the silence of the night, hear the roar of warriors fighting for dreams forevermore For in the battle for our dreams We find our strength in the symphony of life Let's go to any length Fight for your dreams, let the music play In the rhythm of life, find your own way With every beat of your heart and every step you take Keep fighting for your dreams, don't let them break you through the storm as you fight for your dreams in every form for in the melody of life you'll find the truth and in the battle for your dreams you'll find your youth yeah keep fighting for your dreams with all your might in the dance of life let your spirit take flight for in the end it's not about the fame but the journey itself and the fire in your flame <laughs>